Hello, welcome once again. There has always been debate about which replaceable parts should you get. Should you get from the dealership or should you get from aftermarket, which are generic uh, parts, which we refer to them as generic. Well, <clears throat> over the years, working over the years, I myself try to reach a conclusion and understand the difference between them. So once I started using aftermarket parts, it didn't solve the problem. I had to go to the actual dealership parts, which are the manufactured parts from the manufacturer this for parts that are done according to specifications of the manufacturer. The other aftermarket parts are obviously cheaper, but not of the same quality, especially I'm referring to electronic. When it comes to electronics, this is the rule by me. I always go to the dealership to get the manufactured parts, even though it is more expensive. Introduction to, to this before I go to other things. We have to understand sensors. Electronic parts of sensors, obviously, and modules. Sensors, oxygen sensor, a, a picture of an oxygen sensor, and... Like I said before, a mass airflow sensor, what's involved in them? Mass airflow sensor, <clears throat> you have a thermistor, which is a resistor that changes with temperature, its resistance changes. And also we have something over here, the voltage that comes out as a result of the heat or the air passing through these resistors. The magical word is resistors. These electronic components today have resistors in them and also sometimes transistors. Transistors have different gains. Resistors have different resistance values. They are made specifically by the manufacturer with the correct values. So when I was confused why are some working is not working, why is the dealership um, parts are working solving the repairs, I went to my textbook, as I always do, as you know, and I tried to find a solution to, to understand why this is happening. It told me there are resistors here. Now, we know this already. Like uh, uh, I spoke before about the coolant temperature, engine coolant temperature is a thermistor, is a resistor that changes value. Intake air temperature is a resistor that changes value. Okay? Uh, so a crankshaft sensor is a sensor that tells the computer, hey, there's rotations by the crankshaft, let's turn on the fuel pump. What am I getting to? The point that I'm trying to get to is, as you can see over here, we spoke yesterday about engine coolant temperature sensor. As relative to the resistance of it, <clears throat> it starts off as a very high resistance and then it goes down as it heats up. They, therefore, there have to be a specific resistance manufacturer. So 40 kilo ohms in this case, let's say for this one. This is just an example. But there are specifications from, from let's say, GM or whatever. These resistors have to be therm uh, thermistors. It's called a negative coefficient uh, uh, um, resistor, but I don't want to go too technical into it. Basic point is they have resistance, resistance drops, this creates a voltage, as we said yesterday, according to temperature. You start off with a high temperature. As the engine heats up, guess what happens to the voltage? The voltage goes down. We went from 470 to 1.45, a substantial amount. What is all this? The computer looks at this and says, what? This is how I will control the air-fuel ratio. Either I will give more fuel or less fuel. Okay, now this resistance has to be correct because why? Because that's the voltage that you're getting from this component, which is changing resistance according to temperature, which is changing what the voltage. And what does the computer look at? The voltage. How does it know to open the fuel injectors more or less? It knows by the voltage. So basically, what I'm saying is it controls the fuel, more fuel, less fuel. You have a lean mixture, less fuel, more air, or you have a rich fix, uh, uh, mixture, 
meaning more fuel, less air. So it has to compensate. So therefore, the textbook tells me everything has to be correct. Why? Because it's using this as a reference. If these values are off, let's say aftermarket uh, um, components, I call them generic, okay? If instead of 40 kilo ohms, it'll be 30 kilo ohms or somewhat, don't you think the voltage will be off? Don't you think the computer will look at a different voltage? Instead of looking at the voltage, which is supposed to be at 40 kilo ohms, it will be at 30 kilo and the voltage will be less. Therefore, the computer will adjust the air fuel ratio to maybe a, a, the same lean condition or the same rich condition depending upon the voltage. It won't be accurate. <clears throat> In order to have accuracy, and this is the main point that I'm getting to, getting to these have to be specified correctly, have to be manufactured correctly. Why? Because the computer uses this as a guide, as an information to itself from the sensors. I have to put more fuel in order to make the air fuel ratio 14.7 parts air to one part fuel. So why? So I can have proper emissions. Okay? Therefore, you cannot go with aftermarket because the values will be off, the air fuel ratio will be off, your fuel economy will be off. You'll say, I'm using a lot of fuel. Why am I using so much fuel? Because maybe the these values are off, because the resistance is off, because the specifications are off, because it's generic. Okay? Now, let's look at other examples that we have. <clears throat> Not just that. Let's say a map sensor. Look at the chart. This is a chart <clears throat> that's represented. All this information is equipped put it into the microprocessor and it has to make decisions look at the look at the for map sensor that was for uh, engine coolant temperature sensor what i just read according to temperature look at the absolute barometric reading at 31 degrees at 30 30 uh, over here Th uh, 30 34 all the way down to 30 look at lowest allowable vol voltage and minus 40 fahrenheit at 257 uh, um, fahrenheit there's a there's extreme one extreme to another extreme because map says it goes by vacuum and load conditions. These this is what it goes by. It reads the voltages. If the voltages are off, map sensor will be off, and what will happen? The computer will will then uh, um, allow the fuel efficiency to be incorrect why because the sensors are off not because the computer doesn't know what it's doing this is what it's going by charts and charts of information it's a, a, a hardware of computer is only as good as the software that's written into it to rule if the software is off if the voltages are off pcm module says it's not my fault I'm just I'm just following commands. I'm following my orders, like a general in the army. Just follow my orders. If this is if this is four volt, then I have to give I have to hold open the injectors a certain amount of time, milliseconds, whatever it is. So it, everything has to be accurate. This is why I don't do aftermarket. Okay, comes the question now, <clears throat> a viewer. I have a car. I have a I have an old car that I want to give or a high mileage car. What's considered today a high mileage car? Four hundred thousand or seven hundred fifty thousand, like I saw uh, an F one fifty. No, a hundred thousand miles is already considered today a high mileage car, an old car. Why? Because that's when you're starting to get problems. Sometimes even seventy thousand, eighty thousand miles, you start to get problems, especially electronic problems. So <clears throat> he says, says to me. Why should I invest in a mass airflow sensor for a GM, whatever it is, where to get it from the dealership because it's going to be more costly? It's already a high mileage car. I might want to get rid of it. I, want, I might want to sell it. First question, you have a check engine light, a mass airflow sensor, right? If you want to sell it, how can you sell that's this car with a check engine light to someone? Don't you think that he's going to pick up on this? The first thing he's going to see is a check engine light. So if you are the, if I am the seller and you are the viewer, you are a buyer, and I'm selling you this car, you gotta turn on the ignition key. As soon as you see the dashboard, you're gonna see a check engine light. What's the first thing that you have? 
as a buyer of a car, a used car, what's the first thing that you should pay, pay attention to? <clears throat> you should go to the inspection sticker. You cannot pass a check engine light with a, uh, you cannot pass an inspection <clears throat> with a check engine light. Never. Your emissions are off. What are your emissions? Hydrocarbons, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, oxides of, of nitrogen. Doesn't matter, but you'll be off. You look at the inspections, uh, a sticker. <clears throat> Let's say it's due this month or it's due next month. You say to the seller, oh, this is why you want to get rid of this car so quickly. Because you, you know you're not going to pass inspection. Probably, the, probably there's a problem. It needs a major repair. And this is why you want to sell it to me, right? <clears throat> no. <clears throat> That's, you have to get away from that car. Why? If you see that it has a check engine light and it's due for inspection... There might be there might be major problems. There might be remember sensors will stall cars. Will not allow cars to be uh, um, <clears throat> to be started. Hesitation, acceleration problems from sensors themselves also. Might be catalytic converter. Might be any might be anything internal engine. If you see a car and you look at the inspection sticker and there's a check engine light, unless you go to put a scanner in there or a code reader, you understand the knowledge of fuel injection, I would just pass up on that car. I do not know if I can pass inspection on this car. Also, on frame vehicles, like I said, SUVs and these uh, uh, vans, they are frame vehicles. If you're going for a used car and you see underneath, take a flashlight and look underneath and you see corrosion all over that frame going to the body. And I was the first one to point this out on the internet, actually. The first one that you see corrosion that corrosion could go all the way to the fuel lines, corrosive. It could go to the fuel tank, and you could have a hard problem with a fuel filter, replacing a fuel pump if you need to. From water, salt water gets into it. You, you have to pass up on that car buying such a car. So be careful of SUVs, V8 cars, V6s, which are on frame, frame uh, uh, chassis. Be careful of those. So again, use your common sense. Use your common sense. If you want to sell a car, and this is why I'm talking about, are you going to invest in aftermarket um, uh, sensors or are you going to go for the the real one, the, the dealership? If you want to keep that car, right, then it's your own judgment if it's not a safety risk. If I have a safety risk, meaning brakes are a problem or it might stall or it did stall on me, then you know what? That's a safety issue. You, you don't want to... You don't want the car to to uh, 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 stop on you in the middle of, of the freeway or the highway or wherever you're going. That's called the safety issue. If the air conditioning doesn't work because a compressor is expensive, you might get away with it. But remember, you're selling a car to uh, to another person. At least you have to tell them the 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 uh, the things that are wrong with it. If the if the windows don't go down, it's being honesty, and sometimes honesty helps. You know, like that's that's how it is. But anyway, these are the differences of aftermarket dealership parts. <clears throat> Use your judgment, your best judgment. But like I said, look at what the computer is looking at. All these things are written into it. And there's even more graphs of this, more voltages from other sensors that it has to take into consideration. This is just a map sensor. What about the uh, what about intake air temperature sensor? What about the voltages from the other sensor? A signal from crankshaft sensor camshaft sensor all these are written it's absolutely amazing what the engineers have came up with but it makes those decisions more fuel less fuel like i said when it comes to electronics you want the fuel ratio to be correct therefore i only recommend the dealership unless like i said you want to get rid of the car it's up to you i would probably if i would have to put a, a dealership uh, um part in it to get rid of the problem, if it does, drive it another 1,000, 2,000 miles, get my money out of it at least, and then sell it to the person. But like I said, you know, everybody has a different uh, uh, situation financially and all that. So I hope this was helpful. But like I said, this textbook helped me. A textbook is called Automotive Technology, A Systems Approach. It's on, on Google, but it is expensive out there. It's over 900 pages. I wish I had a PDF file, but I don't. Very expensive book, but... 25 years and counting this book still my guide to everything thank you for watching my channel is joe electronic schematics for auto